Okay, folks, good evening again. Welcome to the webinar. Coastal Impact is an NGO which has been established in 2009 for the purpose of marine education, conservation, and research. Okay. And uh, Barracuda Diving, which I also own, was started in 1993. And uh, we are running quite a few projects under uh, Coastal Impact. Right now, we are doing a coral transplantation and uh, a project under microfragmentation technique and uh, also trying to start an education campaign online, marine awareness campaign for schools and colleges, which is scheduled to kick off from next week. So if anybody is interested in joining us as a presenter, we will be doing a, a training program sort of thing, which is a, for only a limited number of people in different cities online so that you can join us and uh, then we can take it from there. We are a part of uh, SSI, but Barracuda Diving is actually a dive center, which is affiliated to SSI. And SSI has got a lot of uh, courses on ecology, including on sharks, on turtles, on mantas and eagle rays, on corals, and on fish. So, and on marine ecology as a broad subject. So you can, uh, you don't have to be a diver to take this, to take these courses. You can actually sign up for them at SSI, uh, divessi.com. And uh, also then you can choose a center. For example, you can choose barricade diving and then you can complete it. These are all available at a very low price. And then if you take the full price, all of them together, you get a combo price of 15,500, which is a steal, believe me, because the, uh, amount of information given there is fantastic and you will not regret. Uh, there's a lot to learn, to be very honest. Okay. So upcoming webinars after this one is going to be 14th of July on Shark Awareness Day. So there's a uh, talk by Devanshi, who is a PhD student at Florida University, International University, which promises to be very interesting. And in July, the date is yet to be fixed. We are going to be having a talk on dolphins by Mihir Sule, who's a PhD student of dolphin behavior, uh, which again, of course, would be fabulously interesting, I would imagine. And the 30th of August is International Whale Shark Day, when there will be a talk by Digan Desai, who's also my partner in our uh, uh, travel business called Scuba Centric. He's a fantastic photographer and a professional vagabond. So he'll have a lot to share with you some absolutely fantastic photographs coming up. Okay, so don't forget. So today's presenter is Dr. Anita George. I met Anita many, many moons ago when she came to Goa with her uh, NGO uh, staff and uh, learned to dive. And uh, that was the beginning of our wonderful relationship that we've had over so many years and I'm so glad we managed to stay in touch all over the years. She's a naturalist, marine sponge, and octocoral taxonomist with expertise in biodiversity, biogeography, conservation, and management of the reef ecosystems. She has a postdoctorate from James Cook University of Australia and has spent quite a bit of time in Australia. In fact, she's been there until recently. And she has handled and also handling currently projects relating to sponge associated fauna and sponges as ecological indicators for the climate change studies on the barrier reef as well as in peninsular India. So this should be a very interesting talk by her because everybody talks only about coral, but nobody talks about sponges, but sponges are also an amazing organism, uh, which will see us uh, learning a lot more about it after Anita has been through with us. Okay. Good evening, folks. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon for all who have joined from all over the world. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. So for the next 30 to 45 minutes, I'm going to take you into this spectacular world of sponges. So sure, like uh, as Venkat was telling, it is uh, the you know, best filters of the ocean. In addition to that, there are so many specialities of sponges. So I can say that they are the unexplored 
treasures of our ocean. So let me take you straight into what are sponges and uh, what they are and what they do for this coral reef ecosystem. So like when we think about what are sponges, the first thing that comes to our mind are some of the bath sponges, then some maybe in the kitchen sponge, then some cartoon sponge, then our favorite sponge cake, and then of course our lovely spongebobs. So all these are the basic, you know, things that come into our mind. I'm taking you to get soaked up for the, uh, in a real sponge for the next few minutes. The early naturalist always classed sponges as plants because uh, they lack organs, they don't move, and they often don't have, uh, often have branches. So uh, maybe in this picture, from this you can uh, really point out which is a sponge and which is a fish. So such a lovely uh, group of animals they are. So they were classified as animals in the 18th century based on the body composition, uh, because of their elastic skeleton, uh, because half a part of this um, skeleton is made up of protein called collagen just like our human tendons and skin. And uh, it, the central cavity always has a changes with uh, all these aquiferous system that canals and everything with a distinct uh, set of water currents. And the interesting part is they are complex animals with no complex characters from a common ancestor. So if when I say about complex animals, uh, I should tell that they come in different colors, different size, different um, you know shapes to confuse the taxonomist. But with no complex characters means they don't have a nervous system, they don't have a circulatory system, they don't have respiratory system, no reproductive system, um, no uh, you know excretory system, and they are from a common ancestor. So such a simple group of animals, such interesting uh, uh, creatures that we can all enjoy, you know, love to see what are uh, the, you know, best things it holds. And it ha doesn't have uh, any true tissues. So when we think about uh, sponges, um, they are the first animal on earth. Uh, this is from Massachusetts and Institute of Technology. What they recorded is, uh, uh, and even with molecular studies, it is proved that they are the first animals and the fossil records shows that about 750 million years ago, this sponge has been recorded. So there are a lot of fossil sponges and they all belong to a group called Metazoa. So this sponge uh, comes under the phylum Porifera. So pori means pores and fera is bearers. So they are pore bearing animals. So in this particular picture you can see all these uh, uh, sponges that are surrounded by a lot of pores called ostia that is inhalant pores and this is the excalon. So here all these pores that is from outside are the inhalant and the, through this uh, exterior it goes through the outside so that is the osculum. So I will show a couple of other pictures where you can clearly see how this inhalant and excalon uh, things work. So where can we find them? So ba basically from the intertidal regions to the deep sea, uh, abuse uh, 8,800 meters we can find them. Even in from the tropics to temperate zones we can find them. And uh, so basically for, for anybody who just uh, go for uh, like a, uh, in the beach, in intertidal just by wading they can find some sponges. In subtitle, like uh, going for diving, you can find plenty of sponges and uh, if you go on a cruise, like uh, deep sea trawling and other things, you will get somehow some sponges. So they are ubiquitous. So anywhere, everywhere you can find them. So they are not only a marine, some freshwater sponges also there. So like in this picture, you can see that some of the ponds, reservoirs, tanks, everywhere on the sides you can see some sponges. So these are the beautiful, uh, like mostly they are green and some brown sponges are also there. 
and basically uh, they are uh, filter feeders. So, so in this picture you can see that uh, they have a central cavity. Um, so, this is the best picture I could see. So, in this picture you can see that uh, this part is showing the interior. So, this is a central cavity and this collar cells, these are the best ones. They keep filtering all the time with their, um, you know, flagellum. So, this makes them the best filter feeders, making them the best vacuum cleaners of our ocean. So, they are hard workers 24 7, they keep filtering. So, this is one of the um, YouTube, uh, you know, if you go to the uh, YouTube, like so, so many videos of Jonathan Bird's Blue World, uh, you can see. So, he what he did is injecting this fluorescent sponge through the uh, inhalant uh, waves, and you can see all these, uh, you know, uh, water coming out in bright color, blue, uh, green color. So, it, it is beautiful that you can see that how much it can pump. It is like uh, every day it can pump about 1000 Olympic sized swimming pool worth of water. So, I know that you won't believe me. That's why I have put this Natural History Museum uh, reference to see that, you know, these guys are the one of the best vacuum cleaners of our ocean. And uh, the adults are generally like uh, most sedentary attached to the seabed on the substratum, but many of them are capable of some kind of motion, locomotion. So, they keep moving. So, here you can see um, most of the common names here, like I did not put any of the um, scientific names here because uh, I know it is really hard. I can say that it can be Calispongia, it is Tedenia, all these things you will not remember all these things and it is very tough. So, right now I am making it really simple. So, this is uh, a yellow golf ball or a tennis ball you can call. Uh, this uh, sponge, it has all these tiny buds. So, if when they are incubated inside the parent, they are called as viviparous and if they are when they broadcast it directly into the seawater, then it is uh, oviparous. So, most of these sponges reproduce uh, sexually. Some of them can reproduce through budding and some go through regeneration of fragments. Then this is a very simple uh, picture where you can see this is the asexual reproduction where the bud falls off on a, on a new rock and then it can you know form into a new sponge. And here uh, the sexual reproduction happens with a egg and a sperm cell both comes and fertilize. Then an embryo is formed a plan la planktonic larvae uh, forms and then it gets into a new sponge pretty much a very simple reproductive cycle. And because of that it is very uh, interesting to culture them uh, in tanks. So, this is what I was telling it comes in different colors, shapes and sizes. So, here you can see that is like golf ball, um, flower shaped, the needle uh, finger shaped, branching type, barrel shaped, vase, vase shaped, all these different types and a lot of encrusting sponges are there, finger shaped sponges, tube sponge and everything comes in different different colors. So, that is and I will show some of the uh, live ones. So, these are some of the common um, names and the common uh, sponges underwater. So, most of them like we can call them as uh, massive, barrel shaped, vase shaped, copper shaped, chalice. So, uh, these are quite common uh, and this is uh, a deep sea gla glass sponge. So, I will show you what are the different classifications and so, you can see the different colors. So, when you take them out, they mostly some of them they lose the colors, some of them they retain, some of them will be in the, in the preservative where you uh, share storing them. So, these are some of the barrel sponge, bath, some, uh, bath sponge, um, 
noodle sponge and everything and these guys immediately will you know shrink them and uh, lose its charm and everything it's uh, that is just to show that dry dry ones and the live ones so the best part with this uh, sponges what they do is uh, their functional roles are mixing of water that is since they are constantly filtering uh, the recycling of water normally happens the bento pelagic coupling that is bento is uh, below and the pelagic is the top and so the circling of water happens so that fishes and other organisms get the nutrients so nicely so it is like making a very good uh, ecosystem in the reef uh, ecosystem like for everybody to have good nutrients and um, have a healthy life so these sponges because of their 24 7 filtering this is very very important for this mixing of water so in many habitats if you see that next to hard corals sponges are often the dominant elements um, in the reef ecosystem so these these are the uh, you know orange uh, sponge and uh, all these guys sitting on top of it are the uh, sea cucumbers so this sponge always like uh, you know excretes some toxins to repel the predators so that's why sponges has these uh, toxins which are important for predators and some this toxicity study is another important thing and this uh, actually that uh, slide was shared by John Hooper. So it encompasses about 40 to 70 percent of microorganisms. So because of that it has a lot of biomedical properties. There is a big project called seabed uh, to sick bed. So that much you know biomedical properties it has like anti-inflammatory, anti-arthritic, antibacterial, anti-malarial, antiviral antifungal important is anti cancer activities and this acetothiamidin is uh, already in the market for treating hiv so for taking a small bit of um, you know drug or a uh, bioactive compound from a sponge we need to kill tons and tons of sponges so that is really not feasible and that is not wise so the best is what people do is once they get the chemical uh, this uh, they f if they find out that this is the guy for treating this kind of disease they started uh, synthesizing that artificially so that is the best thing and the uh, another alternative is you can start culturing them so the sponge farming and uh, the sponge mariculture is a big uh, booming industry coming up and this is a success story from zanzibar where uh, this uh, marine cultures uh, presented that as uh, this particular uh, you know uh, fisher women uh, and all these ladies over there they started culturing sponges in coir ropes so in ropes they started culturing and it is really going well because their reproductive system as i showed is really simple so when you when there is a tiny bit of it on a proper substratum it keeps growing so when we give the you know ample nice environment for them it keeps going all right so we we did a small experiment with this uh, lab cultures so in this you can see that uh, these are the uh, tennis ball like uh, sinacarella species so which is uh, very quite common in uh, anjuna beach where you need to be really uh, you know keen in checking these guys um, and when you take them in the tank you can see them really boom, you know bright and colorful showing their uh, yellow buds and they pr come really well and uh, there is a short video of this one which I can uh, show so these two pictures on the left corner is the under the microscope so you can see a little bit closer view of these uh, oscules and this is the uh, larvae so it is the buds you know the yellow buds you can see so when we talk about these sponges they come under uh, four dominant uh, you know classifications like categories so these cells uh, the first one is calcareous sponges um, these made up of uh, calcium it's limestone and the second one is uh, glass sponges the glass sponges are mostly siliceous made up of silica then uh, demo sponges 
that is the dominant group where you can find like 90% of them are uh, demosponges and they are also siliceous. And the recently, uh, you know, categorized group is the encrusting ones. They come under the homoscleromorphids. So if you take, if I take you through the each classifications quickly, I'm not getting into these details, but this calcareous sponges, about 700 are known right now. And you can see the different types. And these are the different skeleton and spicules. So you can see the variations of each of them. And if you take, see the glass sponge, you can see this beautiful flower type of spicules. And they are found in, uh, you know, more than 8,000, 4,000 meters deep. So I have never seen any, th any glass sponges in the shallow. And uh, look at these. Uh, demo sponges. These are the siliceous made of a silica and mostly like a three, 9,300 known species are there. And look at these spicules. And this is the important categories. Like you need to search them to find out uh, or to categorize them into different uh, groups and uh, classes. And uh, again, this one is uh, encrusting, and you can see again the beautiful spicule categories. Again, it is different. And each and every single nodule makes a difference to say that this guy is different and this guy is different, and uh, they all have a different skeletal structures. That's why sponges, they make this really, really interesting. Look at these beautiful deep sea sponges. So in this deep sea sponges, you can see how uh, you know, tender and uh, feathery they are with a tender stalk. So even in the deep sea, like if you are like scraping them or uh, like in a trawl or something, naturally you won't get the whole sponge. And another interesting group is carnivorous sponge. So this carnivorous sponge is normally, it happened because when in a nutrient poor environment, mostly these are found in the depth of 800 to 4,900 meters. That's why when there is uh, nutrient deficiency, they started like uh, eating other uh, insects and other um, uh, polychaetes and other animals which are just coming up nearby and then start eating them. So again, these guys, you can see them with a slender stalk and uh, small flowery like uh, structures. Mostly people forget and uh, you know, overlook these guy creatures. Of course, Deep sea sponges, we have a, a bit of uh, this, uh, um, the collection thing. Uh, the gear always matters and the mesh size should be less than uh, 0.5 centimeters. And even uh, this epibenthic and hypobenthic sledges are good to get from the bathial and abyssal uh, regions. Mostly you will get from the deep sea, calcareous glass and carnivorous sponges. That, that will be the prevalent one. And most of them, when it comes to the onboard, it will be in a fragile shape. So because of all these high pressures. And now we'll see some of the sponge associations with other groups because they always have uh, interactions with corals, turtles, fishes, nudibranchs, zooxanthellae, octocorals, lilies, and other different types of cryptic groups. So these are the cryptic groups and I can sh tell that they are the best hotels underwater. So you can learn the art of living together that is uh, symbiosis and there is a beautiful article uh, in the natural geographic uh, newsletter about this living together. So all these gobit fishes, isopods, vermited shells, uh, I, um, ribbon worms, polychaetes, everything, even for am inference, plenty of them, plenty of them. If you just get a tiny bit of like 500 gram sponge, you can see heaps of them. So I tell you this, there are experts for each and every group. And even in our lab, like uh, Dr. Bhavan Ingole's lab, students are like fully equipped and uh, doing all these works uh, completely. And again, like when you go to uh, the sponge coral interactions, uh, people have published like that is coral killing sponge. But uh, I can I won't say that <laughs> because uh, I will say that it is basically competition for space. So here the, I can say the soft kills the hard ones. So here you can see the black part is a sponge. 
So they are the Cleona species, bioreading one trying to get this stable coral that is the Tubastria nicely coming out, killing them and trying to occupy the space. And this is a Speciospongia excavating sponge coming and nicely getting into this other um, you know massive sponge. These sponges are from Gulf of Mannar shared by Dr. Manigandran and uh, this uh, sponges, the pink carpet ones, they are like getting into this uh, lot of acroporid and uh, pocilloporid hard corals. And of course, turtles and some fishes love the sponges basically for food and I, I love this picture because this turtle was trying to get some food and um, this is from Cairns. Um, when we were uh, trying to uh, explore this uh, sp coral spawning time. So a beautiful dive and a beautiful picture. And here you can see this wonder another wonderful picture, this sponge loving nudibranchs. Here you can see the hard coral, the sponge trying to attract, uh, you know, get this uh, hard coral. And this nudibranchs, the white ones, I believe that uh, from Dr. like, Deepa Kapte's book, it is Juruna funibris and uh, this is a purple sponge and a perfect, um, you know, getting into that nudibranch coming into sponges and uh, sponges attacking hard corals. And here another uh, different nudibranch on a red coral. There are plenty of them, uh, in, uh, like if you check uh, online, you will get heaps of them. And this is another association with uh, Zeus and the lake. Here you can see the tennis ball sponge and uh, Zeus zoanthids living uh, nicely. And this picture is from Mumbai. And you can see this pink and uh, like green nodules growing nicely along with the uh, um, Zeus and the lake. So here uh, this again helps in coral bleaching and uh, climate change studies. And uh, sponges and mollusks they also live in harmony and this is another uh, orange nodule sponge from marine drive and look at these tiny rock and you can see the sponges and octocorals here you can see these two are the sponge living together and you can see uh, the uh, beautiful gargonians like uh, five different colors you can see how nicely they grow it's all happening in an intertidal region so I'm taking to uh, Marine Drive and show you like how they are living there. And this is a monkey tail uh, or a whip tail gargonians which you can widely see in uh, Grand Island Goa. And uh, the sponge nicely growing on top of it and uh, it's uh, this is another fan shaped sponge uh, stylus growing along with the sponges, uh, you know, octocorals. And Another interesting part with sponge, the speciality is they have, they are plastic in growth forms. So for example, they are easily adapted to different adverse environmental conditions and they are excellent for climate change studies. So for example, if it is a erect sponge, uh, sorry, uh, like a pride sponge, appropriate word. So this is the orange, you know, nodule, uh, like a matte sponge, like uh, for example, so if it is an upright sponge, when the waves are moving in a one direction or uh, when uh, there is a current pushing them, it can grow nicely into a encrusting form or a massive sponge. So they can change its, uh, you know, morphology easily according to the environmental changes. So that is an, uh, another interesting form to study. So now I will take you through. Uh, different places where different kinds of sponges are there. So I will go, these are the, uh, the round ones are where I could uh, dive and explore but all the others are pictures given by all my friends. So like uh, from Gulf of Kutch. So these uh, like you can see orange halva sponge, dark volcano sponge, all these different sponge like this pink and uh, blue waves has been shared by Chandran and others by Purva, one of the students of uh, NIO. So these are, these guys are all living in the intertidal region. 
So, all these sponges varieties you can see the different uh, varieties in different different places that is what I am uh, showing. So, they live in come in different colors different shapes and uh, confuse you to the extreme. So, it is easy the basic thing as Venkat said uh, initially if there is an oscule you can confirm because of the holes the pores you can confirm that they are sponges and then the rest of course to identify them you need to go a bit much deeper which I will explain a little bit of how to ex uh, you know get into the taxonomy part. And these are the chicken liver sponges here you can see this is from Mumbai marine drive where this industrial areas are there all the effluents come to the intertidal region and it is highly stressful environment and I can say that how nicely these guys are surviving there wonderful diversity along these areas you can see beautiful sponges clinging along and uh, even in Worli you can see this green fur sponge uh, like this nodule sponge everything they try to go in that effluent style because that uh, road construction project is going on and uh, I do not know like how long these guys can survive but they are really strong survivors. And this is another uh, place in Kunkeshwar it is a touristic place and again a lot of stressful uh, like environment where people come and this is a very shallow. So, you can see this uh, kind of uh, rock pools and these all these sponges live attaching to these uh, you know uh, different small rock pools. So, you can see so, branching sponge, tennis ball sponge, uh, black liver uh, sponge beautiful in in a small area in a you can see that different varieties and the sponges of Goa again you can see this buff yellow finger sponge very common style is a uh, fan shaped. Uh, bio reading sponges uh, quite common and then in uh, again the beaches you can see this purple mat and the bulbous sponge everything along these edges and this is from Anjuna, Anjuna this uh, golf ball uh, is quite common. Of course, in Kerala coast in zero visibility and uh, this picture was taken by my diving buddy you can see that after I am taking a transect and uh, writing notes it all it survives see here again a massive sponge is growing. So, they can grow everywhere and you can see this uh, uh, Lakshadweep island sponge. So, here you can see some beautiful colors flower sponge, tube sponge, uh, yellow nipple sponge of course, uh, taxonomist are free to name uh, you know we have the <coughs> authority to name some sponges with funny names. Uh, blue um, mat, purple mat, lamina sponges common because it grows along with hard corals and also in small crevices. So, if you take that even Sinacarellas uh, that uh, brown ball sponge you can find them along these edges. Um, so, here in Kanyakumati you can see it is quite dark the visibility is low. So, I have taken some of the sponges uh, like uh, the dried ones uh, in the lab. So, you can see this varieties the stylism this is Halicluna early sponge. So, these uh, these are quite common this um, have a common name I could not find it is Heteron, Her, uh, Hertio species, but um, this is uh, quite interesting. And uh, Gulf of Mannar biosphere reserve you can see that it is a protected area and here you can see um, with this. Uh, seagrass and uh, in a low inter, a low uh, like intertidal region all these digitate hard corals will be there and in that you can see all this black uh, you know slimy uh, black ball sponges and uh, red finger shaped sp uh, sponges. So, Gulf of Mannar diversity is so high this is again shared uh, most of the pictures by Manigandan uh, from NIO. So, you can see the colors. So, when that uh, photo uh, the region then the, when the light you know enters into this uh, particular uh, sponges and they get it the photosynthesis happens and it is really nice. Here you go with some other outside India I will show some of them with the uh, Australian sponge they name them really really interestingly. So, the Bob Marley sponge, 
nicely with this nice uh, you know hair olive green sponge so this is nicely uh, all these different varieties the uh, pink uh, tubes uh, western cups chalice and everything you can see in sponge maps uh, by dr john hopper so john's uh, uh, page uh, it's a big uh, sponge barcoding pay, uh, you know site you can see plenty of sponges uh, over there and a uh, few of these caribbean and indo pacific region this is mostly from uh, indonesia i think i think some indonesian guys are there in the webinar today i think so the so just to show you the difference because some of them cannot be found in indian region so the variations are you know really there uh, the diversity is more but some people like accidentally confirm that into the species level so that is a bit of a uh, worry so that's why i'm just showing the different types so here if you say the diversity and the distribution of sponges uh, totally today as of today like 9314 sponges are found to be valid uh, out of the 17000 nominal species and probably there will be about 25 thousand to twenty six thousand species worldwide so it will keep you, you like busy for the rest of your time and all the rest of the students can take it over to study the sponge so even in a in a vertical you know area like a cliff if you take you can see this gargonians hard corals and you can see uh, like three or four sponges definitely in this area and what is the status of sponge taxonomy in india so here like approximately about 555 species are recorded and only 138 species are considered to be valid because the problem is most of the sponges are collected prior to 1900s most of the records with the limited descriptions which are quite hard for us to confirm to the species now and mostly like uh, net entangled dried and this facility of uh, getting into the sea like scuba diving was quite not quite common why this capacity happened because of the scarcity of sponge taxonomist lack of spatial and geographical knowledge and again uh, difficulty in uh, remote habitat accessibility in india and hard to reach any deposited collections from museums so these makes our study in sponges quite difficult and this is a huge barrel sponge from angria banks again uh, given by dr Baban goli and no, not just uh, with the sponges we need to just go into the uh, water like the fun part and uh, then coming under the microscope the boring part uh, so basically it has the taxonomic challenges so sometimes the same morphologies show different skeletal characters and also its lack of complex characters again makes it really hard now we have more taxa on hand than time so basically that is the difficulty that has been faced by all taxonomists so this has been uh, this quote was uh, mentioned by shima that uh, in, during 1870 you can say uh, you know see how difficult he understood during that time when a spongeologist pass on the taxonomy work to other it is a herculean task and it needs the strength of a hero such is a difficult one so how it is difficult you can see even though it shows very simple outside that the complexity in simplicity so you can see that uh, permeated like holes canals everything each and every sections will show you different confusing parts so you need to really go into deep for example if you if you are getting into spicules all these tiny spicules uh, the, that give strength to the sponge you need to get into the details uh, in a scanning electron microscope or a very good microscope to get into the details and again this is another interesting sponge which confuse everybody that is just for an example i'm telling all these uh, sun, sun just comes under the genus uh, Ircinia uh, but you can call them chicken liver or any kind of sponge but you can see the skeleton each one is different so 
that is the major thing you need to go a little bit deeper and see that inside the network whether there are foreign particles there whether there are some kind of uh, sponge or debris there so all these details you need to get into otherwise if you see the sponge again all these tiny little microsclis these are under the scanning electron microscope really uh, enlarged for you to have an idea under the normal microscope you will really miss these guys and when you take about this uh, black sponge morphologically they look somewhat similar but uh, again this skeleton looks completely different these are fibrous skeleton taxonomy is difficult in naming and confirming their species is uh, really difficult but uh, of course there is scope and uh, there is a strong urgency for everybody to re-evaluate re the older literature type specimen access and also of course we need funds for everything and a little bit of uh, advice like uh, for everybody anybody who are doing any further studies or if you are interested suddenly falling in love with sponge and if you want to identify some sponge and if you want to give it to some experts you should not uh, like uh, store them in formalin because it uh, f ruins uh, you know all this DNA studies so if it can be like 99 percent ethanol at least that is important for the molecular studies and uh, the for the normal spicule and uh, skeletal studies are uh, 70 percent ethanol is fine and field and preserved photographs are a must it is very very important because the colored ones uh, in situ and the ex situ pictures you can see the difference and always don't forget to note down certain things like when it was collected what uh, you know time uh, like uh, where uh, which location whether it is intertidal low, low, low tide or any um, particular location the area where you collect and its appearance how it looks like matty rubbery or uh, how it uh, the texture how it looks like and again the substratum whether it is on a sandy bottom on a rocky bottom or all these uh, you know um, substratum studies you can and of course you can say that who collected it if it's, it is your friend or somebody or uh, we should give that authority to them and all these uh, sponge again face the same as hard coral um, difficulties like uh, all these ocean tunnels are there for these guys sometimes they bleach uh, but compared to hard corals these guys are sturdy so in uh, Mexico one of the studies you know, they could see that uh, uh, like 85 percent of the hard corals were uh, like uh, dying in a bleaching event uh, El Nino but uh, sponges survived but some area sponges also gets bleached and uh, ocean acidification the sediment runoffs pollution oil spill also affects because these guys are completely like a non-stop filter feeders and uh, so in a gist they are all like a beauty underwater they are strong survivors excellent hotels like a lot of biomedical properties are there so good for climate change studies and a lot of possibilities for culture is available and a lot of innovative products can be prepared so a lot of uh, prospects are there to get you into this sponge research because you can make it a like a photography manual which i'm thinking that should come out and uh, any kind of students like coming out for uh, this um, climate change research or a uh, biomedical uh, research uh, any innovative products spongy culture we can give a lot of support even uh, sponge barcoding is one of the initiative that we are planning and uh, of course as part of this capacity building we did sponge workshop and of course as I said this is not like a one man show we need teamwork and in that we trained some sponge souls and uh, I'm uh, very much thankful to NIO, ISR Pune, Rajiv Gandhi Institute, the whole team who supported to conduct this uh, workshop so that some of them who knows the technique like uh, you know that is actually the saying the early polyp gets a plankton so some first come first you know guys uh, they got this training but still there are a lot of uh, opportunities still waiting so i'll just end up with this uh, thing uh, with this quote because uh, what this rainforest guys say is the rainforest are their university supermarket and all but uh, now i can say this ocean is our university or uh, supermarket pharmacy beauty parlor entertainment and hardware stores so we should really name our planet as ocean instead of earth i hope you guys will agree with me let's 
learn and protect sponges. Thank you for listening and now I can take up any questions coming up. Thank you so much. You know, uh, the one thing I wanted to check with you was in many places they said that when the, as you rightly said, the coral is more delicate than the sponges and when they are subjected to ocean acidification or leaching, unfortunately the sponges survive that but the corals don't and then the sponges put additional pressure on the coral by actually feeding on the coral, uh, uh, sorry, taking over the place of the coral. So that puts additional stressors on the coral. Is that correct? Yeah, they, they compete. Y yes, not all sponges do that. That is an interesting thing. So there are specific sponges, especially this bio reading and excavating sponges. They do a lot of this competition uh, with hard corals. But the rest of the guys try to like move their shapes in different ways to survive. And because of this um, filtering thing, um, they make they make the best survivors uh, underwater compared to hard corals. Even though they their name sounds they are soft, but um, they are really uh, the strongest guys. It's like my mariculture. Like you keep the sponge in a tank and you can culture, or you can keep them in wild and you can culture them. So it is a, a name like coined by me so that it is easy for you to understand what is a sponge culture. Very, very good question. I would say this is the uh, interesting uh, research uh, that is going on because uh, as I forgot to say, sponges are very, very mysterious. They keep, they won't give an answer to all the researchers who are doing, uh, you know, experimenting with sponges. So half of the studies it shows they are from microorganisms. Some of them say the sponges itself will emit all these um, chemicals and bioactive compounds to get these uh, predators off. Uh, if somebody comes, if they don't like, that's why some fishes, they won't go to certain sponges. So they sponge, uh, fishes, they will be very specific going to some species. And uh, turtles again do that. So we never know like whether it is from, uh, from the sponge or from the bacteria. So I would uh, suggest you to do study on the microbes first, get into this, uh, uh, segregate them and see what whether it is coming from sponge or because there are some uh, segregating um, uh, experiments that are there. And uh, I would really uh, ask you Mama, to proceed with this because there are heaps and heaps of references you can see. And Nicole Webster's uh, from uh, Ames, uh, Townsville, she is uh, doing a wonderful uh, work on that and uh, plenty of other uh, research papers are available. You can have uh, a look at that and good luck with your research. Yes, I have shown about that freshwater. They also do uh, have all these different skeletons and in addition to that skeleton, they have gemmules, which is a unique uh, tiny bit of, uh, you know, larval uh, form. Uh, that also you need to get identified, but mostly along the tanks, uh, reservoirs and many other small pools, you can find them. Initiative. That is a, a new initiative that we are planning to take, uh, Prasanna. Uh, what we can do is take uh, like one uh, particular group area, like as I showed you different, different regions. We can first uh, start with the bar barcoding of uh, particular you know collections from the intertidal region subtidal regions and if there is uh, any uh, deep sea collections but uh, like what uh, this sponge barcoding project that is happening uh, in australia like uh, uh, it is a mega project with so many collaborators and uh, we can really get that into india because uh, that can be one of the uh, interesting part which makes life easier you know, this uh, taxonomy part, which is really difficult so that at least we can get this uh, thing quite easily. I wanted you to make some comments on the future of the taxonomies, specifically in the Indian region, uh, where we can encourage and how we can encourage young people, what are the opportunities and how best we can, you know, attract them for the taxonomy. What are the opportunities in future?
thank you uh, this part this webinar is one of the initiative this is one of the things that it can reach a wider audience to make it so simple that we can say that it is not that too complicated but what is what are the importance of sponges to attract because the sponge taxonomy as you said is really difficult to get people sit and you know examine under the microscope it needs a lot of patience so even i have seen some boys really uh, patient to learn because initially they always say that girls are good in taxonomy but they uh, the boys always take that reproductive things you know chemical part microbial part by you know antibacterial biomedical pro properties etc but this kind of uh, you know general uh, webinars these social media uh, in fact plays a vital role in uh, telling uh, these importance of sponges that is one thing and also like all these organizations like uh, um, nio and uh, many other uh, organizations in india they can join together and uh, bring out taxonomy grants which can uh, encourage students to come into taxonomy because the students now they are thinking like what is our future if we take taxonomy we won't get jobs so they what they are doing is integrative taxonomy they want to go into um, interdisciplinary studies like uh, uh, sponge associated fauna sponge um, you know anti uh, biomedical research so they uh, merge some of them but actually that is the best way for them to uh, sustain in the uh, in the field but never ever forget everybody should know the it is for all the groups taxonomy is a vital part so morphological taxonomy in addition to molecular one it is important so there are so many molecular works pending waiting for the molecular research because uh, they were thinking that how the sponge looks like in field how and what are the characteristics whether they are soft whether they are so based on that they can organize and classify them so uh, these all should come together and all you guys we are you are all in uh, big positions definitely you can bring uh, recommend this ministry because uh, this important grants that should come from the ministry uh, should uh, encourage the students to come more into taxonomy and study this one uh, that's what my opinion. totally agree i think uh, there are many many fields which are becoming more and more available to in india and it's opening up a lot which is nice to see because the new breed of scientists which we see are completely different from the old lot and uh, you know you are seeing a huge variety in the different fields that people are venturing now which is very encouraging how and when can i start <laughs> that's a good question my dear i am just waiting for all the funds to come and when the covid goes off you can come and join straight away <laughs> that is a good question and uh, i really don't know because i have not uh, worked on that i don't know anybody is uh, studying but uh, you can uh, search for that they have to stress a lot for pumping even when the pollutants are there otherwise it is full of nutrients so if the pollutants uh, what we say is uh, coming up with plastics and other things definitely it will choke any sponge so it can be killed easily so the river runoffs and other issues uh, in one of my paper that is uh, the thing which i published in uh, the great barrier reef during the cyclone uh, some of these sponges are totally gone and uh, this is uh, the sponges are interesting like uh, just like our liver even a tiny bit of it if it is alive living on one particular sponge on a substratum they can grow so when we see that in 2010 when some of them are dead in 2011 they grow in that particular in that same species uh, same location so they are uh, a bit sturdy so they can they the regeneration capacity is really good with uh, sponges that is a uh, another special speciality with sponge i'm a coral guy so i'm working in coral if i go for diving mm -hmm. if i look at a sponge in my lat I, I think oh. that sponge is, sponge is disturbing, right? Okay, you mean the line intersect transect? Yeah, line intersect transect. Like okay, okay. 
this okay. can be good right so so that is the coral percentage just like what we see uh, i says corals uh, the coral percent cover is the best thing for sponges as well mm -hmm. so that in that is the uh, like bell at all paper in even in 2017 and 18 you can see that uh, sponges out compete uh, corals in many places that has been studied by line intercept and point intercept uh, studies only okay so for example i would say, i'm uh, what i'm trying to yeah. get answer is okay if i go for diving in gulf of manar if i do one lit mm -hmm. i'm finding in the lit like 60 percentage coral is there in the next 40 percent is sponge covered then mm -hmm. again the near nearby sites i'm saying okay 80 percent is sponge 20 percent is 20 percent is of corals so mm -hmm. what would be my stand like whether i can say okay this side is normal whether i can go okay this is good what i should say it's based on it's based on the species i could say okay this is dangerous uh see that is another um, uh, important part because if it is a same species of sponge that is growing in one particular area then you cannot say that uh, you know that is a sponge diversity is too high because you are talking about uh, the abundance species richness everything should come into that together to say yes. that uh, the sponges over you know uh, compete that particular area so you need to really see that what kind of species even in lit you will be like looking into hard corals you will write kind that specific uh, species as well right the genus yes. yes so so in that if you say that montipora is too much or a tubastria is too much like you will say that yeah hard corals are more in that area but you won't say that the diversity is more so say similar way you can say that in sponges in one area it is less and so what we have to keep it uh, for my um, advice or uh, vision is mm -hmm. you need to see like um, line intercept transect for a uh, different areas like a uh, three okay. or four different parallel uh, area you know in one area you have to take multiple uh, right. lits so i'm curious to know like uh, you talked about uh, when uh, when the coral and sponge exposed to the sunlight i mean temperature the sponge is more resistant right so I'm curious to know in coral the susandale sitting in ectoderm endoderm so like that in sponge where the susandale is exactly is sitting in i must i mean exactly located as just like on hard corals you cannot find them on the surface or anywhere so even in that pictures where i showed you in mumbai they are the susandale are a little bit separate but in the ectoderm like in the, they are like you can always see them they are not getting into the coenosome or inside the sponge so definitely the susandale are in the cortex many organizations different different like uh, where uh, uh, in uh, this fisheries college ratnagiri dr swapnaja her lab is doing uh, sponge culture and uh, in nio like partly each and every uh, different scientists they do separate cultures like along with they culture mostly this encrusting sponges and uh, as we uh, we in uh, like uh, uh, we have cultured this uh, golf ball sponge so that also is going on really well so sponge cultures we can try in different labs and um, but not like the zanzibar one in the field i haven't heard them uh, like in india so anywhere if you are interested really we can collaborate and start one sure so uh, you can write a project proposal or write an official like an email to all these institutes to find out like any other existing uh, projects are there otherwise the best thing is you can apply for uh, funding there are grants uh, available from the ministries um, dst dbt you can apply and uh, jump into any of your favorite institutes straight away to get into uh, your next level uh, or e even in when you get into your masters Uh, as a part of masters definitely you need to do a thesis or a dissertation in that you can uh, work on sponges so there are plenty of opportunities uh, for that i do have some sponges but uh, of course the visibility was really poor some of the sponges were there and uh, as i told this intertidal sponges they 
and our act uh, you know give uh, a lot of confusion to all these taxonomists so still a lot of things are coming up but uh, some pictures are really blurry so I'm so, um, sorry that I couldn't show some of the pictures but uh, I tell you there are heaps and heaps of uh, pictures that I need to fish out and uh, thank you for asking that and I will definitely get back to you with that. We have almost 18 to 20 species uh, that we have got uh, at Ratnagiri and as you said we have uh, tried to culture uh, uh, three to four uh, species. Uh, one of them that encrusted sponge was there and uh, we mm -hmm. got very good results uh, in uh, our experiment so we would like to continue but then uh, I would definitely like to get back to you so that we can you know uh, check Work about on the taxonomy yeah taxonomy, yeah so yeah. should I send you the um, photographs yes what, what the, the best thing is the photographs with some details, what I have said, yeah. the substratum yeah. and all this uh, details. And also, if you have already taken spicules and skeleton, that will uh, make life easier. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So, uh, what I have. Then we can take it from there. Yeah, sure, sure. So, thank you so much, Anita, for joining us. Really lovely presentation. And I'm sure we all learned a hell of a lot about sponges. And I'd like to thank uh, SSI for giving us this opportunity and this platform for doing these presentations here. Very generous and kind of them. And also thanks to the audience, of course, because they've all been very, very patiently waiting while we've had internet issues. So thank you guys. Much appreciated. So we'll wait for you guys to join us on the next presentation, which is on sharks. So be there on 14th of July, same time, 7.30 Indian Standard Time, please. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Good night, guys.